America is very good at living in the myth of America. You can't train away bias. You can't train away bigotry. He knows that he can step on the line where freedom of speech is and that the Supreme Court will not slap his hand away. And those people didn't even, haven't given black people reparations. Right. That needs to be addressed. We are living in literal serfdom. This is like a new medieval happening. This impacts everybody in the United States. They cannot stand us to have anything. And once they have established this as a precedent, they are going up the chain. It has nothing Shame. to do it with the American to do people. With the it American is all people. about nothing. power. All about power. You know, I never get tired of this. I never get tired of this. It's 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 become part of the brand. The state of things with Aisha, Jill, and Lala. That's part of the brand. We got to get T-shirts of this. Two hands going like this. That would be so good. What is up, everybody? It's Dr. Vibe here, host and producer of the award-winning Dr. Vibe show, the home of Epic Conversations, and I'm the host of Epic Conversations 2020 Best Podcast News Award winner. 2018 Innovation Award winner given out by the Canadian Ethnic Media Association. I also co-host and co-produce the only online show in the world for dads and fathers that's sponsored by Dove Men Plus Care. And as always, I'd like to say you're blessed, highly favored, a magnet for miracles, solution for someone's problem. And uh, make sure you're giving yourself grace, especially these days. And don't just manage your time, manage your energy. So before we bring two of the three, um, superstars on the platform. Some quick housekeeping today. If you are up to it, please like the Dr. Vibe show on YouTube. Hit the subscribe, then hit the notification because you get notified when we're on air. And also the other epic conversations I host. Also, please like the Dr. Vibe show on Facebook, LinkedIn, and the Instagram. Also, would you like to advertise on the Dr. Vibe show? Please email me at dr period at no dr period vibe at the dr vibe com and uh i was gonna say something else but we'll let the ladies come on so we've got aisha and lala tonight with us well where lala is this this morning and there she goes maybe we just get maybe we get her picture with this on the on a t-shirt or something but uh we've got them both here jill is not with us today unfortunately um i would just say that just have prayers jill's uh going through a family situation right now so we'll just leave it that but have jill jones in your prayers ladies what's been going on busy 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 uh summer is lit and um it, it's good things it's all good things um but I like being busy. Busy keeps me happy. Well, you know, so Lala has been, I don't like the word busy. I like the word positive productive. She's been very positive productive. Uh, she won't toot her horn, but she's just done some posts talking about women buying real estate. What's the story behind yeah. that? Well, I have a whole series and, and I've been teaching real estate classes since 2006. One thing I noticed is women tend to not want to buy because they're expecting a certain thing to happen in their life before they buy. They want to be married. They want to have children. But what they don't realize is you can go ahead and start building your wealth now and incorporate life into life when it happens um, because real estate really is a really good investment and that can save for your rainy day it also can help with your children's college it can you know be your first house for your husband if you decide to get married so my goal is to get women out of the thinking that they can't do something because something else didn't happen in their life okay it just sounds listening to a commentator to commentator today who i respect who has his phd in economics and he said that to get from lower class to middle class home home ownership and for many people if you want to get from middle class to higher class stock ownership 
but the first yes. jump is the ownership of real estate. So family, if you want to know about real estate internationally, yeah. <laughs> La La Key is your lady. Make sure you follow her on L and any challenge. Grace gives a great lesson on branding everywhere. It's at Realty Goddess. Doesn't matter what yeah. platform. So uniform <laughs> branding. Don't know how you were able to do that. Who did you pay some people off to make sure you got that? I started early. I, I was an early adopter. Matter of fact, my very first company that I decided that I was going to brand Realty Goddess laughed at me. Everybody in the office laughed at me and said, um, oh, people are, oh, that's just too pompous. And I didn't listen to them. And I kept going with my own thoughts. And now everyone is like, well, how did you do that? Well, I was a forward thinker. So don't let people hold you back. Excellent. And uh, welcome back, Aisha K. Staggers. Uh, we haven't seen for a bit. You're overcoming a little bit of a health challenge. You're still in the process, but you said you had to be back on here. And your doctor said you need to have at least some social interaction once a week. And you chose us. Yeah, because for the most part, I had been keeping away from people because my, my, I was telling Dr. Vibe beforehand, my mouth hasn't caught up with my head yet because I keep having seizures. So, mm -hmm. um, wow. but she said, I need to get in the practice of being around people again. And my daughter made sure before she went to work that I look human. So she put a little <laughs> stuff <laughs> on me because, <laughs> because otherwise I was looking very peaked. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, in my in my heritage, they say they say you probably say you were looking a little rough. Um, rough is uh, kind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look very cute right now. Yeah, you look <laughs> great. You're looking great. Well, and thank you for taking the time. And again, um, I always say to people, your health is your wealth. Yeah. Yeah. I was so telling. Yeah, I was telling you earlier that. Um, this is the first day that I haven't had a seizure in a long time. Oh, wow. And wow. all week, the first day I was able to sit up. So all the time I was responding to you on Discord, I was laying flat on my back. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. So, and you know what? And you're in the communications and so is Laura, but we love when people do something called a segue. <laughs> so you just did a lovely segue for what I was going to talk about. And Again, want to encourage people, and I'm going to show it in real time here, the State of Things Discord group, the State of Things. And I mean, uh, one of the people that's on this uh, Discord group, he, he said to me, wow. <laughs> he says, I did. He goes, man, he, goes, I, he doesn't live. He lives in Canada. But he said, I don't want to live in America <laughs> after what they're sharing <laughs> on this Discord group. Pretty hey, frightening. But yeah, so really want to encourage people, the more the merrier, that, uh, hey, if you want to find out what's really going on in the United States of America, the Discord group. There's a picture of it there. I'm just going to put on the screen and uh, how you can become a part of it. And this is how you become a part of it. By emailing me at dr period v i b e at the dr v i b e s h o w dot com and uh, lots of great interaction going on there. It's been just fire, fire, fire. So before we get into our main conversation topics, any any warm up topics you want to chat about tonight? Actually, I could I could bring one to the table if you want. Go right ahead because it's a well, lot. The, isn't the it? Yeah, the prime the prime minister of the country that I live in. Him and his wife are separated. So I, I saw that and I was yeah. just, I, I was shocked, but Justin's trying to get his boot back, I guess. Oh okay. <laughs> but and it's funny, I someone had to tell me this week, I had no idea. And then I also looked in the Discord group and it was posted there, and I just went, Yeah, yeah. And the funny thing is. Uh, his government right now is really trading the polls, and he did the the most. Uh, how could I say the biggest cabinet shuffle in his political career in the last really? week or so? Yes. Wow. Yes, big, big cabinet shuffle. I mean, la, uh, the at least half of the cabinet was shuffled, at least, and they were just it was a big, big cabinet shuffle. They are trailing the polls right now to the Conservative Party, 
And uh, so he was saying he wanted to, well, there, and I don't know how much people have seen this, but there is a hot issue going on in the Toronto area. A long story short, um, and the, it started a few weeks ago. What was it? Or was it? Well, okay. So let me work in rever reverse osmosis. Recently, there was a 60-year-old Toronto school teacher or principal that committed suicide. Oh. Now, now the thing is, backstory even some more. He was part like he was part of a school that had some diversity and inclusion training by an organization called the Kojo Institute, and basically he had voiced some objections to some of the training and then a right wing newspaper here called the national post said basically that because of the because of the training and because he got a little bit allegedly got a little bit ostracized like he tr he took some time off because of the personal effect on him and he tried to get his job back or jobs back and the toronto district school board wouldn't hire him so oh, wow. he he basically he committed suicide. So there was a report in the National Post saying that, you know, basically, and the columnist in his last paragraph said basically, hey, we need to re-examine this sort of training and the potential impacts it can have, especially if it's government funded. So then there was a backlash again. Like now a lot of right wing groups are really trying to push where I live in Ontario saying, we need to get rid of DEI training, anti-racism training. Doing that and now, yeah, and then so the lady that runs this institute, Kike, Joe, I can't remember her last name. can't remember her last name, but uh, there have been death threats against her and members of her company that did provide the oh, DEI wow. services. Um, there was a press conference the other day, a number of black organizations were saying, hey, uh, the Minister of Education of the province, why are you even considering this? Because of, you know, they said, hey, we are sad because this person took their life but it does not you know and and the funny thing is another a right sort of center right or center left or left newspaper the toronto star got tapes of the actual interaction and they sort of contradict oh. what, they, they still contradict of what this national post is saying happened or the extremity of what they said happened so it's very interesting and now we're waiting to see a lot of people waiting to see if the government's going to you know, rescind taking a look at the DEI anti-racism training in Toronto schools. That that that's what happened when the uh, congressman was calling black people colored because they were debating DEI training for um, uh, federal employees here. Yeah, and, and the right wing is is very much much against it. But my opinion is that if you can put a law that says kids aren't allowed to feel bad by teaching them actual history, meaning just white kids, because if black kids have to learn about slavery the way they're teaching it, they're going to feel bad. But it only mm -hmm. holds for white kids. But if you can do that, then you definitely need the DEI training. Uh, you know, in, in light of the Supreme Court, ruling down affirmative action is not going to happen in college and universities. What impact do both of you feel that will happen to DEI training, uh, anti-racism tra anti racism training in the private sector based on what the Supreme Court has decided? Depends on where you are. Like Connecticut, it will not, it will, to not do it will be detrimental because we have, we are largely a democratic state. Um, we're a democratic state to the point that even we will have a super majority house and senate and still elect a republican governor who has to be center left but um the private sector is always going to be dictated here at least by the um, public sector and so our public sector um you know that we have we because we had a long school desegregation case that started when i was still in school more than 30 years ago it's still going on. Um, it's it's imperative that we do DEI just so they can meet even just the basics for the um, the the court case. Lala, what are your um, thoughts? Um, you know what what I see is a lot of pushbacks from families, but my 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 hope and prayer is that um, 
as much as they're pushing this agenda that we have to push back with it just as strong. Um, I did see, and I don't, I believe it was in, I can't remember which state it was. They, it's a new state that added on to this crazy DeSantis thought of, you know, we're going to just whitewash history. And there were parents there that came to that school board and said, how dare you? I do not want my children to be taught things that are not true. And I mean, and th I mean, they all had it down pat. Now, if we carry on with that energy and we fight back, we may get some leverage. But what I'm seeing right now is we're losing ground and we're going to have to start at home and at the grassroots. Um, and this is one of the reasons I wear things like this. You know, people want to ask you, you know, what does that mean? Well, you need to tell them what the true meaning is, um, because what they have done is converted it and polluted it so much that it's not even what it was in the first place. Um, so I, I see a lot of danger, but in my household, when I grew up and, and, and I did the same thing with my child, I'm sure Aisha did too, um, is, you know, we taught true history, you know, like, we, like you may not have got it in the books, but at home you got the oral truth. And this yeah. is what we continue. We have to continue to do. Yeah. My mother was a history teacher, so her students really did, any of her students that had her got to learn true history. She taught at a magnet school, and so she had a lot of leverage with what she could teach, and she definitely taught uh, Black history. My best friend, my oldest friend, um, had my mother for high school for four years, and, you know, that's, my mother really has inspired a lot of people to become teachers in history because of the way that she taught it. Well, uh, we're going to come back to this in a little bit because we have our second story is going to go a little bit more deeper on this in regards to history and slavery. So, uh, so let's get it going. We got our first call and also Lala Key. She is so adept in her social media stuff. She's broadcasting this on her Facebook page and her Twitter page. Lala, yes. thank you very much. Thank you very so much. If anybody is following on my Facebook page, go ahead and comment. This is new to you guys. A lot of you are not really sure that we do this, but I want you to see that we <laughs> yes. are also doing a lot of positive things and talking about real world stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is great. And uh, so, yeah, make your comments. We'll show them in real time and be respectful and be intelligent <laughs> or I'll block you. So yeah. I have, I have right. I have the power to the block. The blessing black ministry is strong. <laughs> yes. Well, it's interesting. There was a gentleman like when I posted this on YouTube at around five thirty, between five and five thirty Eastern time. He made he was making this comment. I just go, Wah. and Aisha came on a few months said, block him. I said, yes, ma'am. Uh, so let's. Let's do the first conversation piece, and it's an ongoing thing. 45 pleads not guilty to charges in 2020 election indictment and is and is threatening social media posts flagged by prosecutors in co court filing. And the judge I, I responded. I, huh? she just, the judge responded judge about an hour ago. She okay, said, well, um, let, yeah. Well, let's talk about the charges first. What's not to be charged? Everything is mounting <laughs> against him. Um, if, if the man blinks, he has another charge because it's rightfully so. What bothers me the most, and let's just be very truthful. The, the biggest thing that Obama did was wear a daggone uh, tan suit and they were ready to throw him underneath the jail. This man has shown that he is nothing but a Han man from the very beginning, even before he got into the White House, yet he is still getting the luxury of walking around and opening his garbage mouth full of stuff, calling people everything under the sun and 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 pleading innocence when we see everything um, that he has done and is continuing to do. Now, I am a firm believer in, you know, innocent until proven guilty, but not in this case. 
we know for sure that he has done things that are illegal. His whole family has. And what bothers me is he's one of these narcissist people that instead of the attention being on him for any kind of negative, he always wants to cry wolf for somebody else. We're not talking about Hunter Biden. We're not talking about Hunter Biden. We're talking about you and all the shit that you had in your house allowing people to come in and walk through and do whatever they want to with those documents. This is critical. And this is why it really bothers me as an American that people want to support that. Even with Nixon, even with Nixon, both sides were like, oh, no, he's got to go. But not in this situation. So I have a lot of issues, but I'm going to tell you one thing. You better not keep on messing with Jack because Jack don't play. And I love the fact that he calls himself stirring Jack down in the face. And Jack was just un, you know, unfathomed, like, yeah, and you in here. And I still got more things for you. He's not playing around. And, and I would, here's the thing. I would still be saying this, guys, if it was somebody else. It's not just Trump. Me as an American, I am appalled at what all he has done to this country. I'm going to be quiet because yeah. I got a lot more to say. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the most important charge that Jack came up with was that fourth one about denying people their right to vote. When you, when people vote, they spoke. They, they said what they want because you don't like the color that they are. Now, mind you, he picked Detroit, Philadelphia, Phoenix, um, it, um, Santa Fe, and a couple of other places that have either large black or brown populations. You weren't going to win those cities anyway. Atlanta was the other one. You weren't gonna win those cities anyway, period, mm -hmm. and you knew it. You knew it. You didn't win them in 2016. So to concoct this, Thing where you're going to say, guess what? Your votes don't count because I don't like you people. Your votes can count because you like me. You know, I, I was seeing on another Instagram post and his people have adopted this rate. They, they, they now call any of this stuff racism and oppression. And, and first of all, they don't have any concept of what racism is. You're a person of color in this world. You know what true racism looks like, feels mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. But I was telling my daughter this the other day, um, when you aren't used to being held accountable, accountability can feel like oppression. And that is what he is feeling now. He has never been held accountable for anything. Every time it's always been a civil case. He's always been able to pay it off. Um, you, you know, for example, he shouldn't have been elected on the basis that he created a college that had no accreditation, took federal money that he wasn't supposed to, and had to end up paying that back. He had an airline that they didn't follow the laws of the FAA, so that he had to get rid of that. Trump stakes, they weren't mm -hmm. USDA certified, had to end that. Trump water, is it's so stale. What was he throwing at the people in Florida when they needed water, he was giving them 20 year old Trump water because it had his name on it. So everything this man touches is illegal in some way. It, it doesn't follow the law, but he le he's leaned on the fact that he's only been held um, liable in a civil way. So that's either money or just agree to close the business. This is criminal. And what I'm not liking is the fact that people are considering that, well, he's going to get convicted, but he won't go to jail. Yeah. Wait a, yeah. Wait a second. Why won't he go to jail? Because um, Shaniqua Harris, <laughs> if she had done this, would be in jail right now. Okay. Any, any of the three of us would be in jail right now awaiting trial. And they're saying because he, Presidents get secret service for life. You know what? The way that he talks about law enforcement is a reason why he shouldn't have secret service for mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And if you got to go to prison, bro, you got to go to prison. Mm -hmm. So we're going to got some comments here. 
And uh, there's some people watching on Lala's Facebook page, so you're more than happy to chime in. Regina, hey, Regina says, yes, so sick of, quote, what, well, what about, I wish the Senate could get 60 me members to pass an amendment saying no citizen convicted of felonies can run for president. President, just cut them off. <laughs> well, you know, the other thing, too, is he, if, if, if he wants to do the what about is and what about Hunter Biden, what about Ivanka and Jared? They I actually understand. worked in the White House. They were they were hired. They had security clearances, but they still made eight hundred million dollars. What Hunter made? What you're mad? His ten million to there. They made what eighty times the amount that he made, and are still benefiting from all of their connections that they did. This, this is this is corruption at its finest, and this is what. This is what nightmares are made of. We are just now tapping into how much damage this man has done to our country. This is the iceberg that sunk the Titanic. We don't see all the, the mess that's underneath. We only see the, the cap of this. We are going to see detrimental things to about and what's going on for our country for years and years and years to come, probably much longer than any of us will be here. Um, and, and just the fact that these other countries such as Russia and, and China and all these places are building their own wealth um, and getting rid of the American dollar, this is this is telling and I, I really truly feel that trump had his hand in that as well yeah and and the only thing that the only other thing you need to know about how bad all this stuff was was remember when the day after a president is elected is when they start getting um the security briefings and everything trump didn't want to turn that over to joe biden at all remember no. Not at Joe all. Biden, Joe Biden didn't know what he had until the day he walked into office. And I'm mm -hmm. sure he has he hasn't told us even half of what mm -hmm. he had to deal with. I'm sure. And then everybody wants to keep blaming him. Um, now, listen, I don't agree with what Biden does all the time either, but I never have with any president. I call it like I call it. I call it as best as I can. When things are wrong, I'm gonna call you out about it. Do I like what Hunter Biden did and all this stuff? No, but guess what? He's not a public servant. He's not a public servant. And Joe Biden is not a bad father because he is a parent to his child. Everything that I feel that the Republican party or the, excuse me, the Trump Republican party, because there are some Republicans who still fighting against a lot of the things that he set precedent to um, is a very dangerous thing. Everything that they tout as good and wholesome is not the same for their own green pastures. Mm, yeah. and, okay. and the truth of the matter is that if we're, if we're being honest, Donald Trump doesn't believe in any of the Republican Party's principles or anything. The only thing that he cared about was that he made more money under them because of taxes. But up until he, up until there was a black president that uh, made fun of him, he was a Democrat. All right, we got some comment, that's 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 comment that's here. That's <laughs> Regina says, so happy to see Aisha back in the house of vibe. Hi, yes, it is good to have her back, but we need the three ladies back eventually. Um, I was I was hanging out with my dad today and uh, he was talking about the judge. And uh, he said he's happy with the judge. Why is he really happy with the judge? Because Jamaican. the judge has Jamaican heritage. <laughs> <laughs> he was proud. He says, We're everywhere. We're going to put the man in jail. It take a Jamaican to do that. Well, this is a, yeah, you know, you know, well, Jamaican's in high heaven right now. They got this judge, and also the Jamaican women's soccer team was advanced to the next, got into the qualifying round or the elimination round of the World Cup. So my dad is flying high right now. But let me ask, and I heard about. 45 wanting the trial to be moved to West Virginia because he said it was he said it was more yeah. diverse yeah uh-huh really he said, never said about West Virginia diversity yeah okay and so do we see this trial actually happening before yes. the election 
Yeah. Uh, yes. The judge, uh, everybody that has talked about her has said the same thing. She doesn't play. Mm. No. And she and and because of her reaction, I know we said we pushed this off, but Aisha did mention this judge has already responded to what Jack is calling Trump out for because immediately, just like he always does, he throws a tantrum. He went we straight to truth social, and then he will not shut up. And then basically, he put a threat out. That's a threat. Yes, I, I was gonna. You, you're reading my alleged mind and doing another great segue. Let's talk about this alleged threat. I'm gonna let Aisha go well, ahead, Aisha. The, the, <laughs> the, the thing that what is it come for me and I'm gonna come for you. That yeah. here's another reason why that is so disturbing and why Jack did the right thing. Because unprovoked, remember what he did just a few weeks ago to Barack Obama? He put a yeah. former president's address on his social media and told his people, somebody went there with 400 rounds of ammo. They thank God for secret service. But here, here's the problem with, with what he did. She said um, on Thursday, do not tamper with witnesses. Do not threaten, do not, no retribution, nothing. And what does he do? First thing he does is he goes and he does that. And then he says, oh, but I have freedom of speech. No, the judge said you have freedom of speech, except where this case is concerned. <laughs> you cannot threaten people, witness tampering. So Jack, Jack did this. They said he did it last night around like 1130 and turned this into the judge. And then Trump's people responded, said, oh, we need more time. She said, you can respond by Monday by 5 p.m. He said, no, we need more time, more time. Well, an hour ago, the judge said, I said, I said Monday by 5 p.m. Wow. I am so happy for that. This is how it should go. Yeah. Well, well, she's going to be really good. Well, she's going to be really good, too, because he wants it out of D.C. He's already he already started talking about this judge calling her a Trump hating judge. You haven't gotten in front of her yet. Dude, she already said your first court date is August 28th. Why are you, you think, see, too many people have shown him deferential treatment. Yes. And this, he thinks he can get away with stuff. No, you, you are in a criminal, this is a criminal case, not a civil case. She's not playing with you. She, you wait till you have to sit in front of her after you've done all this stuff. It's like, you didn't even wait a day. It was the same day. Well, look at this. He says, and if you're watching live on the replay, and you can't if you're listening to this on the replay, 45 said in capital letters, if you go after me, I'm coming after you. Exclamation point and a quotation. I'm going, okay. Yeah. You know, right. I learned something today, though. I, I was trying to figure out why Mike Pence was... He was very soft when the indictment came out. Then all of a sudden, Thursday afternoon, <laughs> Mike Pence got so he was there with his hands on his hips. I mean, he he Mike Pence decided he wasn't gonna be no punk because I I, I was trying to figure out why, and I said to my daughter, his attorneys must have said, read the indictment. Uh-huh. But I learned, but I learned today. Mike Pence is an attorney. So Mike Pence read the indictment as an attorney and saw all the stuff. He and that's also why Jack is relying on his notes because he took, he documented his notes, not just like any of us would. He wrote attorney briefs every time wow. these things wow. happened. So Mike Pence went back and read the indictment as an attorney. And wow. that pissed him off because when he saw all the evidence, he was like, uh uh-uh. uh. And then he, and mother was there too that day. <laughs> oh, Mike Lord. Pence like, mm-hmm. Yes. Mike Pence, I, you know, but it was actually good friend. to see him finally wake up because I feel like I always, every time I look at him, I feel like you're. You're a walking zombie, dude. You're just like, you have no emotion. You have, ah, oh. it's like somebody stole his soul. And at least we saw that he had some type of real reaction. And and 
in a way, I have like a little bit of sadness about the fact that, dude, you're that asleep that you didn't realize they were coming to take you out. You really don't believe that that's not what was going to happen because they were coming for your head. It's like, you know, you know how I, I say Mike Pence eats unseasoned white meat chicken, um, white bread with mayonnaise and white American cheese and salt. It's like somebody snuck black pepper on his sandwich the other day. <laughs> and he, got a, he got a little oomph. It's like he did right. a glass of milk because he needed a uh -oh. strong drink. Uh-oh. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Hey, okay. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I've been listening and I was like, I gotta jump on. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, oh no, oh boy, oh boy. Ooh. Well, you're sideways. I, I, oh, I'm sorry. No, the barbecue tur ignition was just turned up one or two notches before Jill comes on. I just want to share some comments from Paul Katz. Paul has said this. He goes, I think that Dom has no self-control and keeps talking and talking. We'll make it more like the judge will do what can be done to fast track the trial. Uh, see, he also says, did you see the quote truth unquote truth? He put on this afternoon direct, directly targeting Pence. Sometimes it's like not worth for him to be off Twitter. Every pace, what he says. Everyone and then... Does. He also said, sorry, everyone pays what he says. And then Paul says, it's hard to imagine what sympathy for Pence, even if he's coming around now. He hitched his wagon in 2016. If he didn't know what Donald really was in 16, he's more ignorant than I ever imagined. Oh, he knew. He just wanted to be president somehow. Oh, yeah. That's all that was about. Because we have, you know, in this country, we are good at making vice presidents presidents when they shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Exactly. George H.W. Bush right. comes to mind. Jill Jones, <coughs> you were watching and you had to come on. This is this is going to yeah. be trouble. So you go ahead. You go, girl. I know. I, I mean, I agree with everything the ladies have been saying. I think that for me, a couple of things, I'm really, you know, I think Pence speaking out is completely his strategy. He's been waiting a long time to do this. It says a lot for me to me about him. I think it shows that boy, he will stew for a long time and he'll wait for the right moment to pile on or to use it. Uh, he wasn't going to give away that story freely. He was going to use it to his own advantage. Mm -hmm. I think that's how he felt after being kind of used by Donald Trump in a way, just sort of, you know, and, and what's crazy is that he still, he still has been holding back a little because it was his temper contemporaneous notes that actually really took Jack down the road. He, there were questions that just didn't even need to be asked of Trump, of, of Pence, because they were already notes that were being taken. And everybody mm -hmm. knows how that, how you do that when you work in those environments. Um, I remember um, Van Jones once told me a story, you know, although Van has been hitting it really good lately, guys, on his page, he's been coming hard for the Trumpers and the Trump administration about what's going on. And he's made some really incredible points. But he had told me that, you know, when you're in the White House, things are hitting you all at once. There's so much, so many moving parts. And I feel like, you know, maybe Pence's survival for a long time had been to just keep my mouth shut, hunker down and take notes um, and never give an indication, you know, but Pence is a company man. I've said this mm. before. We've all seen it. And don't be surprised that company men sometimes can end up taking over the whole company at, at ultimately they just don't do any good um as far as trump i think and the judge she's right she's not playing with him today it, it has to be said he was warned um and he just always is that toddler who has to step outside the boundary and what do you do mm -hmm. with that you, you i'm sorry you can't you you know it's like he he was really going to need to be locked up or in have house house arrest, I don't know. But he's mm -hmm. pushing it because he wants to play victim even more. But you've got to remember, this is a mob boss. 
And unfortunately, they they treated John Gotti horribly in comparison to what they're doing to Donald Trump. Donald Trump survived. In fact, I always believed that Trump was responsible for ratting out a lot of the mobs, the mobsters in New York because he piled around with Rudy Giuliani. And I really feel like he's always been that rat. And then when he couldn't get more money from the Italians, he went and got the money from the Russians. So, you know, he's always living nine lives on each. He's 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 an actual parasite. Donald Trump is a parasite and he always yep. looks to, for a new host. That's all he yep. does. And locking him up might limit his hosts. Yeah. That's all. Well, this judge is penicillin because <laughs> she's going to take him out. Yeah, <laughs> but Dershowitz was on TV, old stupid pedo Dor Dershowitz. I mean, <laughs> who, you know, the loneliest guy in Martha's Vineyard because he doesn't get invited to parties. That that oh. one, like, oh, nobody invites me to parties anymore with 10 year old girls. Oh, um, God. Yeah, because that's nobody's dealt with the fact that this dude really did some inappropriate things with Epstein's situation. Yes. No ifs, ands, or buts. I'm not, I'm not going after everybody on an airplane. There's actual. Uh, in documents, depositions about yes. what Dershowitz did. So yes. they've let him off. You know, the worst part about all of it, Dr. Vibe, is that America has let people off for so long that then by the time it comes, it's like they are now in the kitchen, like burning them grits and cooking them greens and like trying to get it all together. <laughs> and something will fall, but it, it just isn't really cool. It just shows you, Fani should have had that shit done. It should have already mm -hmm. been going on. The, these are, I know that, because I'm not of a person who feels that it should have all happened at once. I, I don't feel comfortable with that. Everybody taking a hit because these were crimes that were committed and they should have been dealt with too sweet right okay. away. And that's Agreed. not cool. All right. yeah. Well, I, I read, I read one commentary. I, well, I read a story this week. There was a capital law enforcer saying, why wasn't 45 arrested the next day? I agree. He yeah, should have had, they should have rolled up. You're absolutely right. You know, they, he and said, they why wasn't he arrested the next day? Paul, Paul adds again with another comment. Paul says, is there any legal precedent for a judge to restrict online or television communication for a defendant? Because that's a punishment that would really freak 45 out. Paul is so right. There's something, and Aisha might know this. I feel that the media needs to have a little bit of a blackout on them too, because the reality is they're all giving him advice. His uh -huh. people are giving advice to him. When you say, uh, don't talk to this witness or whatever, the media is the conduit right now. And unfortunate, and that is exactly what's going on. Dershowitz was saying, he should take this to the Supreme Court. He should do this amount of filing. Everybody's offering this free unsolicited advice and it's in a very indirect, shady-ass way. And I hope that Jack Smith is keeping notes of who the little Pied Pipers are that are deciding to talk. But definitely the media is not doing any favors by constantly saying, well, what would you do? And what would this be? Agree. Because Donald Agree. Trump is watching as much as we are. Y'all agree. He's not, he's not watching Fox at this point. And, and no. I'll, say, I'll say this, because um, I, I want to talk about the media because... Like I said, we're, we're getting into silly season here, yeah. and the media is <laughs> the media is about to lose its mind because th this is a ratings boom. But um, Joy Joy Reid said something the other day that it just yeah, excuse me, it slipped my mind that quick. But here's the one thing that is not going to help him, and, and this is also why the judge came back so quick with her ruling today and told him absolutely not denied because his attorney's talking about, we need more time for discovery and this and that, but dude is on TV every chance. Every day. Every and the day. fact is that he put out the, he put out the defense on television. And so everyone responded to it like, oh my God, they're like, that can't be what you're going to do. That cannot be it because you just gave away the, um, you just gave away the, um, the, the the excuse that he knew what he was doing you mm -hmm. just, just literally said i mean his, his defense attorney is on tv at least 
five times a day. That mm-hmm. should not happen. Um, if, if you are, I, because you don't see Jack Smith up in the media talking about, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Fawny is different because she's an elected Remember, mm-hmm. she's, elect, she's elect, an elected person, so she has to work in media. But Jack Smith is not. He's a career attorney, so he's doing what career attorneys do. But Donald Trump's um, attorneys, remember, not one has survived that spent all their time in the media. Because once they spend all their time in the media and give the strategy away, he tells them that they should quit. Like that one guy with the red hair that's been on MSNBC, and he remember he left under um, mysterious circumstances. What was it? He said that um, irreconcilable differences. Yeah. But I promise you that Trump tried to get him to do something that he wasn't comfortable doing, comfortable with. and mm-hmm. proved to him that oh my God, you're you're guilty because you you tried to do that with Mike Pence. And Mike, like I said, Mike Pence is an attorney. He tried to get an attorney. If he was taking the advice of attorneys. He had an attorney tell him, I can't do this. You had an attorney tell you that you that you couldn't do this. So don't. But say here's that, the oh, thing, I, though. I, we, we all know that he's not used to no. He's never been used to no. He's always been coddled. So if you tell him no, he's just off to the next person. Because so, accountability feels like oppression, oppression. When, you're used, when you're not used to it. And at this point, he's um, acquittal shopping yes. with, his, with his attorneys. I agree. Mm. Good point. All right. We got a lot more conversation topics to go, and we got a lot of things to chat about. Everyone who's watching live, especially, give your comments. Share them out. Paul Katz is very much engaged. Let's have some others going at it. Let's have our next conversation topic. We didn't get a chance to talk about this recently. Let's talk about it. Black Republicans are, aren't are happy with DeSantis about Florida's new teaching guidelines on slavery. Did y'all see the article that um, Ron DeSantis is fighting with everybody black? <laughs> Republican, Democrat. Everybody. It, He's in, in his own agenda doesn't even make sense. I honestly think at nighttime it probably wrestles with his own self because he's he's, he's just ridiculous. And the fact that there are so many other states are grabbing on to his stupidity is a telling sign about our country. Uh, but then again, the last the last few elections have been very telling about our country. But, um, you know, black Republicans need to step up and speak out and, and they need to fight back. Um, but they are right. But they're still letting him do it. I mean, so. And he's hiding behind a black woman. Yeah, because the person that wrote that is the most self-hating black person. I, I, I mean, it, and she's doubling down. She's a who old, wrote it? Some old granny looking. Um, <laughs> she looks like she's about ninety years old. Um, you know, she's one of those never been kissed before. Did kind she of work for his people. family? I don't. I don't know. But was she, she the housekeeper? Did she? I don't know. But, wet nurse? but the two, um, the two black people, her and the man. <laughs> Her and a man did that, and, and not oh one of them God. has any background in um, education or, or anything. They, they're they like, they're just two random people that were picked to be on that yeah. thing. Yeah. And he doesn't anything. have any education. And and what little that he got never got absorbed into that brick head of his. It makes you, you know, think that anybody can go to Yale. He's as, he Yale is so school. thick, it's not even funny. He's really, really an idiot. Yes. He's a Slavery. what you call a bonehead. I mean, and you know, this is what Van Jones actually where I really liked he, he was talking about this and it was about he made a, a co- correlation I can't remember about if you're saying that, you know, you get a benefit from from um slavery like you learned like a trade or something. He picked some other crazy, he, he picked something else to compare it to. And it really was kind of like, yeah, yo, that's that's for real. I'm, I'm gonna try to remember what Van compared it to, but it was quite, quite interesting because it was like, no, 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 you're gonna say, so did you, yeah, I'm not making any sense because I don't know what, know what I'm talking you know about. They went, <laughs> well, you know why they went <laughs> in the first place, right? 
<laughs> Africa has every natural resource. They also had people who knew how to work with those resources, how to cultivate them. That is why they specifically chose Africans. Because remember, they yeah. initially started with Native Americans here. And mm -hmm. then they then they were going to go to other places, but they went to Africa. You're talking about people who knew, remember, remember that blacksmithing and all those things weren't the first um, the first uh, business. We were, it was an agricultural country. So these are people who knew how to dig the trenches and do irrigation and things like that. They brought over okra and sugar. These are people who knew how to work with rice and tobacco and coffee, which were the main exports in the South when the, when you know, they first started. That was a little later on. At the beginning, they just wanted human bodies. I mean, they weren't cherry picking uh, who could do what. It was about no, they weren't. breeding. But in but the, you're the talking continent. about an era of after the islands started having, but at the beginning, they weren't like going, oh, he looks like a good crop guy. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. No, no, I don't uh, think they were, that they were, it, it's the ignorance of, of that white people have a people of color anyway. Yeah, like, let's oh, not because put that this person, out there. Because they that person are, has brown skin, oh, they probably know how to do this. But Africa was a an agricultural... They didn't know that. Beginning. They knew that they didn't know. The Portuguese fucking like went over there and made deals with that fucking little dumbass king's son who wanted to be an archbishop. And the Catholic Church played his ass, gave the son his little fucking like archbishop's crown which was completely meaningless and they freaking circumvented and started stealing all the people in the tribes but they'd started doing trade with the north african people at yeah but it was like sellout, sellout they did city. Know, no this is before this is before they even got into the slave trade this is before when they were doing their trade their, initially with north africa right above egypt with Italy, they were doing a lot of trades. They yeah, knew I'm not what talking about had. brown skin Africans. We're talking black, which is no, further it, down. That part of Egypt is are the are where the um, Sudanese people migrated from. They were very. But they're not. Jewish. They're not. They're not the hardcore African look. I'm telling you, it's more of the and they and most half of them don't even concede that they are black either, because you get that mix of Arabs and there are Arabs who can, are counted here as white, as Caucasian. But this is before, but this is even before that you had the Arabs migrating to, um, to that Northern part in Cairo and everything. And, and keep in mind, they only took people from the, the, the West Coast of Africa because you, if they went too far into the continent, it wouldn't have been safe for them. Most I would have just the Ivory Coast. I just want to interject quickly. April Watts says he taught history. Who taught history? That's what I DeSantis, want to know. DeSantis. Oh, he did. He was, a, he was an attorney first. Um, okay. Who but, DeSantis <laughs> taught history? He taught, he taught yeah, history. And on Mother Goose. School. But let me on tell you Mother something Goose. about private okay. schools. But private schools, you don't have to necessarily have a teaching He's an idiot. Okay. If anything, he was banging those private school girls. I'm sorry. He's <laughs> oh horrible. Gosh. There's no reason why that man should have ever. He doesn't even. I really would love to see his military record because I almost feel like that's not true. I just don't. I heard his He's wife talking the, the other day a, um, and she sounded like she was on Black Beauties. I mean, it's like crazy mm -hmm. that the, the family, they are ratchet as hell. I don't know what's wrong with them, but they're not real people, guys. They're not real. He's Something's wrong. The governor's mansion into a frat house. I, I mean, between yeah. him, and Matt, him and Matt Gates act like um, frat boys that never grew up. Yeah. Okay. Just want yeah. to interject. So Black Beauty is saying that glad to see the ladies on together tonight, Dr. Vibe. I am glad too. And everyone is going in nicely. I will just, and so I'm just going to quote from this article, the new policies implem implemented by DeSantis administration in Florida require teachers to teach middle school students that enslaved people, quote, develop skills, which in some t instances could be applied for their personal benefit, unquote. Well, being the slave master's child didn't benefit a lot of people because they guess what? They were still enslaved. So if, if we're gonna if we're gonna talk about people benefiting from enslavement, the fact that your father owned the plantation should have been 
a benefit because we know how some people like nepotism, but that wasn't even a benefit. So let's let's be real. Skills. Remember, a lot of people who were enslaved lived and died in slave in slavery. What benefit yeah. were in personal life? Mm -hmm. So I have a feeling that this story is going to have legs because I have a feeling we'll see what happens in other Republican states because Florida seems to be the bellwether to see what happens there. So well, we'll they also came for the LGBTQ people to, to, what, yesterday, now too. Yeah. They can't do the AP psychology class because it mentions LGBTQ yes. people oh, in wow. Florida. Okay. So wait, well, this is what um, Van Jones compared it to. He okay. compared he compared their comments about it to the benefits of um, of child molestation. So this is what blew everybody away because he was saying that people were like, "Oh, you know," um, he goes, uh, "I don't know, child sexual." predation predation and trafficking which is something that the right wing is so concerned about what if i got on here and i said well you know maybe your piano teacher molested you but at least you learned how to play the piano yes. or yes. maybe your football yes. coach molested you but maybe but you, you, you still got that scholarship into yeah. your college that's a so good that's a good analogy absolutely correct when he said this because this is the party of lincoln and we should never forget that they have basically shit all over it because remember these are the dirty democrats who flipped around before and they love doing what they're doing to lincoln's party they love it the dixiecrats that's who the they dixiecrats. are these the are, are the dixiecrats moonlighting again as they always do they're always wolves in sheep's clothing but now well, they're just wolves it, and, and it, it says a lot it, it I says would a just lot say, too before you mm -hmm. go, I would say this isn't Lincoln's party. This is 45's party. Exactly. Yeah. It's not. Yeah, yes. it is 45's yes. party. And, you know, it is. It's my party and I cry if I want to cry. If I want to. <laughs> and it does that to his they party. They can't and ever say that they're not racist, though, because remember, Dixiecrats went to the Republican Party when they black did. people started leaving yeah. the Republican party and becoming Democrats. That is when they, that is when they left after, you know, black people, including Martin Luther King were Republicans up till JFK. Right. When, when black people started voting for JFK and coming to the democratic party. That's and when it changed. The Dixiecrats were like, Oh, well then we're just going to have to go where they're leaving. Well, because the Dixiecrats operated in confusion and they've always spoken with forked tongue. So if you look now, everything they do is they play the game mirror. Everything that mm -hmm. we say, like, oh, my God, this is the big lie. They're now calling it what we're the big lie. So it's like when I took a studying at the Meisner, uh, the neighborhood playhouse, it's a theatrical program by Sanford Meisner. And the first, really the first couple of year, year you're spending repeating back and forth the same word that somebody initiates. Only after you say it a million times to each other, like you suck, you suck, you suck, you suck. Just do that over and over with somebody. Soon somebody pushes it and goes, you suck. And then it goes, mm -hmm. you suck. This is what we're doing, this whole mirroring thing. And then you suddenly forget who started saying you suck first. Yeah. So that, yeah. that is, that is like that a t-shirt. This is the strategy of yeah. the Republicans and they do it every time. If I went and said, you know, I've got toe fungus. Uh, uh, I saw Joe Biden with toe fungus or I've got um, Donald Trump has toe fungus. Right. If I said that pretty soon, Joe Biden would have toe fungus. Like it yeah. is just a game of mirror. And what's well, the same thing with the age thing? Come on, y'all. Y'all yeah. keep saying Biden's old, which I three yeah. years. Trump is just what two so years. I'm sorry, two years younger. Just two years younger. It, it, he's two right. years, and he only no, no. Stuff. He said seven seven. He didn't even say seventy seven when they asked him his age. He went seven seven, which is really he weird. Said he said it twice too. Yeah, it was like, bitch. What are you trying to say? Yeah, he's oh, really a fucking God. mess. Oh, God. He was, and people are saying that he looked more comfortable. I'm sorry, the fact his answers, and, and I read the transcript. There's nothing comfortable about that man because the truth is, he 
There's nothing comfortable about him in his own skin. He refers to himself in the third person. You ask him his age. He says seven, seven. He, I mean, the man can't drink out of a cup without holding the cup. Like, like, like I hold the cup when I'm having a seizure. It, I mean, the man, it, there's something fundamentally wrong. He definitely with- battles psychosis for sure. It's, it's kind of evident and it's clear to see it, but you know, what, what's crazy is all the people defending him and there's yeah. Fox getting ready to catch a lawsuit again because they're letting uh, that right. Jesse Waters say the craziest stuff. Yes. All, right. all they did was replace Tucker Carlson with uh, Tucker Carlson 2.0. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Right. Black Beauty, Black Beauty says, we for sakes weren't even considered to be whole human beings. So how in the world do they consider our ancestors to be benefiting from being third class citizens? So bad that they put the three fifths compromise in, in the constitution. One of, those, one of those amendments is to amend the fact that we were not considered human. Yes. Why do you think they did the sen- And why did they do it? Because of the census. Because in Mississippi for a time, you have more black people then you have white people. And if those black people, once they were free, got to all vote the way that they would have, that's why Mississippi had one of the first black um, legislators after reconstruction. That's why they, that's why they took away the right to vote. That was throughout the South. There were more black people in the South than there were white people. All right. They had to devalue the vote and they've done it more times than many. And let's be honest. Remember, the the three-fifths compromise was a compromise because they initially wanted five-eighths. And racists want to go back to the point of the Constitution like when when there were never any amendments, guys. That's what they want. They want it from the day that it it started Mm -hmm. and that's it. They don't want any amendments. So if you don't fucking wake up and pay it, and I mean woke, get the woked. Y'all should be woked and yoked because the Mm -hmm. reality is that's what they want and they're slowly eroding our society and states to get it. And and they will. There's a big chance that they're going to get it if he wins. And that is not even, Yeah, that's just the truth. The thing that- All right, let's- The one thing- One last comment, Aisha, before we move on. The one thing that does give some promise, at least with the whole DeSantis thing, is that for some reason he thinks that it will that will play the it, the whole country the way it plays in Florida. He has not been tested in unfriendly circles, and that's why I'm glad that Newsom is going to debate him. Oh, I don't, I I don't think that it will that. though. I think it would play, and I think there are many people who would start to see the advantage of being white even white people going well let's just let it roll let the chips sorry guys i don't know what to say because there were i will always say this 71 million people voted for donald trump yes take that in that means one in every five people that you're looking at is a trump voted for trump yep okay let's move on uh story here Two of the expelled Tennessee three Democrats win back their seats. 90%. Yeah. 90%. People yeah. have spoken. So, you know, your your little plots and plannings, they're not always going to work. I mean, everything that you do in the dark is going to come to the light. These two young brothers are very, you better be watching them. You better be watching them because they didn't come to play. And I love that about that. And they are uniquely themselves. They don't let people walk over them. And they are, they're going to be the future. I want more of them. More, more of them, please. Yes, this people don't play. (laughs) And anybody have anything else? Or, Or is that a quick story from us? That's a quickie? Quick, but we have to continuously remind them because the dude, one of the, the, the guy, the jerk, this said that he would take an apology from them. For what? They, what? What are they apologizing to you for? The first thing is that let's be very clear. You thought you were doing this under the under without the lights and things of, you know, the cameras. You just got embarrassed. That's that's all this is about. You 
and you're asking for an apology. They won their seats. No apology. Apo that's your apology. Okay. But that's, that's that is a a, um, a, a slave master uh, move anyway. You know, oh massa, we so sorry. That is nothing but a play uh, from from years ago. They they always want us to apologize to them for nothing, absolutely nothing. These young brothers don't have to apologize for nothing. I mean, the good thing about them being back there is that. They can deal, they will definitely provide representation for people in, in the whole Republicans attack on class warfare, because that's what's kind of going on in the smaller states to sort of erode everything. That's the strategy too to get rid of labor and to attack, um, yeah, to, to go against workers. So at least we know we have these guys there to deal with some of these things that have been coming up in these rural regions, um, especially where Biden has been trying to uh, implement new companies again and things that are going on. Uh, we've been, it's been met with a lot of roadblocks from Republicans who either don't want to accept new business in their area. Like when you really think about, um, just take $210,000 and, multiply it by everybody in the House of Representatives. And that's how much money has been wasted when you really put it up against uh, what they have not done. They have not been doing exactly. anything but cock blocking. And, yeah. and you know, that's it. And it's really shameful. They've done nothing for their constituents and we've, we've nope. had enough of it. People mm -hmm. are hurting and there's some good things going on. And if they would only have worked in tandem and lay down their fucking bitch ass fucking swords and deal with the benefits that we have, we could have really risen up quicker because financially we are seeing a lot of things moving forward. But then as soon as they do, you have corporate America, those two bitches, Saudi Arabia and, and Putin and them cutting their gas uh, production. I mean, it's yeah. like, are we all going to continue to think that Saudi Arabia is our friend? Like, yo, 9-11, right. y'all. That wasn't a dream. And that was a reason. Those bitches hate us. So I think we should return the favor. We hate you, too. You know, it's like, well, and so, like world, just when we're getting on our too. feet. A no friend. What, who, what kind of fucking friend, as soon as you get on your feet, comes by and says, well... I'm going to turn off your lights now, bitch. I'm going to, you know, make it more expensive for you to live. Uh, gee, I'm going to go and raid your fucking refrigerator and leave you with nothing. Fuck you. And then we really need to do it. And, and I know that, you know, the administration and foreign policy is trying to deal with the fact that BRICS is aligning because they all hate us. It seems like all the foreign countries just want to, like, jock up and dick swag and, you know, all these, like, you know, pseudo- uh, boys who who have crushes on each other. It's just too weird to me that we're allowing all this to go on, but we need to cut our losses. But in spite of everything, Biden's economy is is pulling through, but he's yeah. got people who are shitting on it every day to make, to sabotage it. Mm. It's like, you know, I woke up the other day and when I thought sabotage, I was playing like the Beastie Boys and I was like, oh shit. Yeah, this shit is sabotage everywhere you look. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Right. I, one last oh. on this Tennessee on this Tennessee thing. I mean, I'm, I have to say that Justin Jones gives me um, a little bit of hope because when I was um, when I was a student at Fisk, the person that had his seat um, was Harold Ford Jr. And at that time, '96, we all thought that Harold Ford Jr had promise and was going to, you know, uh -huh. probably become the first black president. He's such a disappointment. All right. This is something that happened a while ago. Well, it was an ongoing story till it now is at this part of the journey. The Carly Russell arrest. I just need to know why. I, I need to know why. I already apologized to Jill because you know I told you I was like no, no, no. but um, I don't. I'm angry. I don't. I, it just like I don't need to know why the woman at Starbucks today was sitting there talking to herself. I really don't need to know. I need. 
I need to know that our country is going to start taking care of these people and putting them away or doing something or or having some kind of credentialing going on before they get phones or whatever the fuck is going on. I don't need to I know, need to know that she gets the correct punishment. I'm sorry. There's nothing mentally wrong with this chick. I, I, okay, I, I agree this this was about i think this was over a guy and it's like just just be just be honest with that i don't appreciate there are black people saying oh she doesn't need to go to prison yes she does yes, she, she does. does oh no she needs she needs um help no she doesn't no she no, needs, she to, go needs to, to go to jail she needs to go to prison because you know if if for nothing else then for the fact that she pulled the leg of that woman whose daughter really was murdered yeah. In that, yes. in that town, she had yes. people. Look, she'll never be able to pay back what what they spent looking for her. No. So, so she needs to pay it some other way. And I think prison is appropriate. Well, you know, D.L. Hughley posted um, a wonderful thing that a, a a lady who I don't know who she was, but it was a great way for her to come on and express herself. I don't think she goes live all the time, but she came on and spoke about this, and she really made some wonderful points like she was like um in my day my mother would have taken me up to the jailhouse and the cop house and spanked my butt right in front of them and said now y'all gonna do what y'all need to do with her because this generation has no um no thought of any kind of repercussion they just feel entitled enough that, oh, well, I just had a bad day. I needed a time out. You know, no, your ass needed to be spanked is what it needed to be done. And I'm sorry, that's how I feel with her. You know, she needs to be punished for what she's done. And I don't believe that she's sorry. See, there's a difference though. You can punish her all day long, but if you ain't sorry, you haven't done any good. So mm -hmm. I feel like we are in this gray area of no repercussions and, and, and entitlement. You know, when I was, what, six years old, I walked out of a Kmart with some purple bubble yum, some great bubble yum, got in the car and proceeded to open it up. And my mother looked at me and my mother said, you need to go back in that store and tell them you took this and give it back. And I learned such shame from having to do that. And, and then I got, you know, spanked when I got home. But the fact of the matter is that my mother made me go and embarrass myself and humble myself yes. and admit what I did was wrong. And I had to, I had to do that. I had to take the responsibility. She, ha she has been talking through her attorneys, through her parents. She's not taking responsibility at this point. Yeah. So if she can't do that, then she needs to take responsibility because guess what? In jail, They'll make sure that you do. You with your degree and all this other stuff, it's not going to do you a bit of good with a uh, with a um, record. Yeah, well, what people are saying is, well, she'll never be able to work again. Or blah, blah, blah. Okay. Bullshit. Bullshit. I'm sorry, that's BS. I'm calling BS because now she, there you go. She'll get a book deal. Why I did it. And it's the same thing with everything. And I was just thinking about this today, and I'm not trying to draw this out, but you know, the, the girl who was married to Hugh Hefner, you know, she's getting ready to come out with a book and she's like, well, nobody is going to be spared. Well, bitch, they shouldn't have never been spared this whole time. You know, y'all wait to the appropriate moment to when it's benefiting you instead of protecting society and calling out the BS when you see it. I don't want your book. I'm not buying your book. I'm not listening to your interview. I'm not nothing because why? You've shown your true character by waiting until it serves you. And I have problems with that. Well, we, we have a problem with our system here where there have been a lot of times we sit up and say, oh, they're going to handle them in jail. Once they go in jail, they're going to fix them. Well, that's not entirely true because you've got to look at a situation like a Charles Manson. When he was in jail, the amount of money he used to receive in the post, in letters, was mm -hmm. incredibly high. Mm -hmm. He became too valuable for the guards. He became on a on a on another kind of environmental, you know, in their little uh, um, little breakdown, their hierarchy. So no, whoever is the most notorious criminal, we seem to think, oh my God, well these pedophiles, they'll be taken care of in such and such or whatever. No, if they're notorious or, or infamous. No, there's a shitload of people who send them money. 
this Leslie, was it Leslie Van Houten or uh, yeah. one of them we just got out? Yeah. They say yeah. she's worth $15 million already because yes. she's been offered a book deal. So when we sit and see these girls or whatever, look at Amy Fisher, Joey Buttafuoco. Remember she shot yes. um, his wife in the face. She definitely went down a road that was destined for her. She became an OnlyFans, you know, whatever. She ended up with Joey. She did, she ended she up did, with Joey uh, for a while. She did uh, um, hardcore uh, porn. You know, this was the road she went down after prison. There was no prison reform. There are people that are. Did y'all ever see the bad seed? Like, no, you know, no. there, there it's just shit like that that happens. And these people... I don't know. We're just giving them so much thought. It's like even with the Lizzo people. It's like, yeah. if you don't want to fucking work for her, fucking don't work for her. Move the fuck on. Because I don't believe a fucking word that they've said. You don't have to go to a sex club. You know it's a sex club. There's something that after a certain age, you know, and this is where I'm going to say to Lizzo, my love, don't hire people based upon shit like they must be fat. Because the reality is people are people, skinny or fat. You shouldn't yeah. have even had that criteria because that's in its own way. It's not elevating. It's still creating some kind of separation. They need to be able to do the job properly because when you try to fire them, they, they did you in. That's the reality. But I want to tag on something that you said, Jill, before you go, go on this, because this is very important. You, mm -hmm. you touched on Manson, right? We, we know what Manson is. We knew how much he was. But where did Manson hone his skills? Don't forget, he was in prison and then got out. He learned from the pimps. He learned from the criminals. He wanted to be a pimp. He got, and, and in prison, they try to embedder you. So they had them reading influential people, how to talk to people and be influential. He learned all those skills. When your mind is already twisted, those things become your fuel for when you get out to get to the next level. I think that's very important that what that's you said. That's what people say about right. prison is that you only learn to become a better, yeah, a better, a better a better criminal. For some, for some, I think that you could give somebody, you know, a bowl of soup and they'll see spiders in it. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. after a point, a deranged and deceased, diseased mind is what leads them down and and a, and a very sick spirit you know you have to have a, a sickness here to want to be a, uh, a murderer or to do that kind of stuff obviously that's where Agreed. the fine line here is but where the barometer is of where we're punishing people for it or we think there are people who are a write-off and if they get better we don't need the ACLU to come in and say, you shouldn't have kept them in jail. Fuck off. This person was a fucking nightmare. It's a miracle that they're nice now, but I wouldn't fucking trust them to fucking take out my garbage. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, it's, it's like there are people that are born deranged yeah. and they see things different. It, it doesn't matter. I, I, I've seen it. It's like, so let's just stop bullshitting and, and nickel fighting around because it's really bad for our society. You know, but that's it's like the point. I mean, if you already have that, that bad seed, it's going to grow. Well, mm -hmm. you know, remember how the bad seed ended, right? The mother yeah. tried to kill the daughter, but and she, she got ended up, off. But she, yeah. ended, no, the daughter ended. The mother ended up dying. The mother so, and she got off. Yeah, the daughter went on about her business, and the daughter and was ho her. was hopped playing hopscotch like like she didn't kill all those people so but it's about a perspective it's about who knows what it is when somebody when somebody turns like that this is the the whole thing with the girl she might just be spoiled and entitled and feel like you know and this was just that breaking point in her psyche but at the end point i mean how we got a lot of people like that at this point and short yeah. of putting everybody on medication then you have those who can't stay on medication because we don't have health care for them because, you know, America was a country that didn't want to give black people mental health care or any kind of physical uh, health care. That's the real reason when, by the way, I feel when all those white people went crazy on Barack Obama because he gave us the one thing that was denied to the poor and to black people, which was health care. And they lost their damn minds. And that was the day they said, we're going to bring lynching back. And we're that not going to, we don't even have to lynch 
the, with a rope anymore. We'll do it in a very metaphoric, like a symbolic ways. We will cut people off. And that's You're right about happened. that, though. There was a um, YouTube short that I saw, and they were talking about how people didn't like the New Deal because it meant that Black people would also get the health yes, care. Yes, I saw and that. And then the Social Security. And, and that's why the poor white people were like, oh, no, if they're going to get it, no, we don't want it. That was it. Yeah. They hated okay. us so much. Like, really. And they, still they do. Not they people. did. And they, they still us. do. It's really okay. outrageous because hate, hate, everybody knows hate will destroy everything. Because if we don't get that together, that's it. And I mean, let's just stop with the Elon Musk thing. I, I feel guilty every day. I go on Twitter at this point because the reality is I'm a black woman on a on a on a on a um, racist site. He's racist. Which, he by really the way, is. I don't. I, I have really seriously backed away. I removed it from my phone. I, I yeah, it's not online I feel either. So much freer because. That shit will oppress you all day long. I was I was too addicted. I had to get rid of that. And especially since I I, I just can't stand that man. There's just something about him he's that apartheid, me. you know. Yeah, I can't. He's definitely can't. grew up under apartheid and he benefited from it. And then he acts like he didn't. He is a 55-year-old man who definitely benefited from from apartheid. And what's really terrible is he still enlists. Africans and children and labor. And, you know, every time we pick up our phones, think of 40,000 little kids and tiny hands that are putting this shit together and totally being exploited. I said to my husband today, all the years we've been on this planet, and it seems like humans have not made things better, but actually yeah. made things worse and created so much more suffering each generation 10 times over. It's really, it's really not it's a testament to should it even go on anymore? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. let's uh, get some comments and we'll move on to the next conversation piece. And a friend of the show is here, Dr. Tatch Dr. is in the house. Tachi. She is here, host of the livest program online that talks about media tech and pop culture, Media Scope on 5 p.m. Eastern times on Wednesday on Instagram Live, then at 6 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesdays on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitch, and other channels. Paul Katz says, I don't believe the Lizzo dancers either, Jill. I saw the interview and I could feel the manipulation and the give me mind mentality. And I then too. I feel weird being on Twitter considering Elon is also anti-Semitic. But well, they so wouldn't have the wanted other... to be on a Prince tour. I can tell you that. Shit. They are like, <laughs> these little fucking soft girls. Damn. But so well, so far, the other networks don't have the light stuff I want to see. So I'm there until something else takes over. Yeah, so. but I think that's a problem with us, too. And this is what my dilemma was, Paul. I was saying the same thing, but what am I getting from it? Absolutely nothing. So for my personal decision, I had to let it go. Um, I do know that I have to post some things for business, but I'm even starting to even question that. I mean, my account is so minisilk. Nobody pays attention to it anyway. So um, the only reason I really keep it is because, you know, I want to make sure I keep my branding name. I, I can't get rid of that. But um, now, nah, I mean, I, I'm even questioning even doing anything business wise on there. Nobody's following anyway. Yeah, I'm okay. afraid I'll have a seizure every time I, if I even think of opening it. So I don't. Discord. All right, let's move on. <laughs> so last conversation piece. Wells Fargo customer support missing deposits from their bank account. And I know with that you ladies may talk about this, but there's other things about Wells Fargo that are very concerning. So who wants to kick off on this last conversation piece? I, will. I stopped dealing with Wells Fargo about what, 10 years ago, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I tell people every day, let me tell you something from a real estate standpoint. Every time someone has come to me using Wells Fargo, it has been a complete nightmare with their loans. Yeah. Also, I do know for a fact that Wells Fargo 
was not really following any kind of protocol when it came to doing foreclosures on people. There were a lot of illegal foreclosures that happened. Those people never got their homes back and they don't deal with people of colors, communities at all. Okay. Everything about Wells Fargo, in my opinion, because I have to say in my opinion, uh, is crooked. Stay away from them. They are nothing but a farce. You know, I know that all these banks are folding and I don't understand why Wells Fargo is not one of them that had to be pretty much forced to close. They have been playing with people's money from the very beginning, yet they still come on and talk about we're the oldest institution. Okay, well, that don't mean you're the best institution. So my advice to you is do not use them for mortgage, <coughs> do not use them for your banking. They're Stay closing their mortgage them. division. And they are they're closing their mortgage division. Now and they're stepping back go for their uh refinancing. But then again, I just told you the reasons you don't need to be using them in the first place. And if your servicer changes when you get a mortgage, now let's be honest, I want you to know this. Hear me well, y'all. You may close with someone like US Bank or another type of bank that's out there. But when you close, if you go with a certain company, if that's not servicing their own loans, your loan is going to get sold as a package. If your loan gets sold, you're pretty much kind of screwed sometimes. So you need to be looking at refinancing in some certain situation on that if you can. Um, but at all costs, guys, stay away from Wells Fargo. They will not do you any service, period. Well, the reselling thing that you said, Lala, that's what's happening with student loans. And that's why people are can never get out the debt because they are selling them as packages. And then they keep yeah. selling and keep selling. Even when you're close to paying off, they sell and start all over again. And then that's why during the pandemic, many people had did not have access to their loans being frozen because it had been sold into a private situation. Mm -hmm. So it kept them outside of the realm of, um, you know, they got fucked basically. Yeah. And that was something that the Biden people should have really addressed and the Trump people should have just been like all loans on that end of story, moratorium, whatever. Because many people who had housing stuff, they lost their homes because of that. Yes, they um, did. Because they had- We're been just now out. starting to see I'm telling y'all guys, I, I'm in the REO business. I know about the REO. We were told a year and a half ago, look, y'all need to brush up on your training because this, these foreclosures are coming and we are seeing them right now as we speak. Now, here's the thing. You're not going to see the same thing that you saw in 2008. Okay. Because now the, um, what do you call those auction houses? are the ones who are pretty much taking over these REOs. So you have to put you have to put your bid in online through an agent and things of that nature. That's a different beast than what you dealt with in 2008, okay? Um, and in a lot of cases, they are selling them with the people still in the house. So you're gonna be responsible for evicting these people. Do you really wanna get involved in that? No, you don't. So you need to be very, very careful about your moves when it comes to real estate right now. Um, I'm not saying it's not a good time to buy because the good time to buy is whenever you are ready, not when somebody else says it, when you are. But you need to be wise and educated about what you're gonna do. And Wells Fargo, na, 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 no. But you know you know, I don't trust Wells Fargo on this side of the country. We didn't have it. We actually, Wells Fargo had taken over several other banks that had merged. So it was like SunTrust from the South and um, was it United, First United up here? They became mm -hmm. one and became First Union. And then First Union became something else that went out, was going out of business. And Wells, Far Wells Fargo took over. And that's one of the reasons why I never really trusted Wells Fargo. That's how well, I they're, up they're with them. moving more into wealth management, into yeah. that private bank where they have like, you know, they sold their assets, I think, over with $603 billion. They have like $43 billion in just assets of like, it used to be Abbott Downing, and they did a lot of rebranding in 2021, which um, clearly because they were getting hit with so many things, I don't know, they did a whole rebranding. And now it's called the private bank, which is for ultra high net worth individuals. Um, and as far as like, 
they're providing mortgages. They said they were stepping away, which means there will be a lot of layoffs shortly. But mainly, you know, a lot of people said it's because, you know, corporations are going in and buying real estate at the moment and it's going to just be a rental kind of country. So basically there's going to be no reason for regular people to even consider be be considered for an actual loan for a house. Like think about that. They are actually getting to the point where it's like we're not even going to consider a regular person who's not an ultra high net worth to even buy a house. They're everybody's going to have to rent. This is very dangerous what's happening. Um, Wells Fargo should have been closed long ago. It has been committed so many violations uh, with the FCC and everything. The FCC is a fucking joke. It's like, you know, it's like a fucking hemorrhoid that just, oh, you know, yeah. does nothing and needs to be cut out too. Um, it is bad, but it's bad what's happening with the real estate because everybody, it's like all the level across the United States. It's like you have somebody who's watching some stupid reality show and watching some dumb, you know, C word getting her hair done or eyelashes done. And it costs $150 to have it done. And the little idiot in like Montana in, in bumfuck Montana is like, I'm going to charge 150 for eyelashes too. So what happens is the cost of the rates of what people, their entitlement level and how they value themselves is really based upon these really odd bullshit, like influencers, all of that fucking nonsense. It's such fucking trash. The whoring that's going on from everybody, uh, you know, just fucking whoring your life. The whore's hustle and the hustler's whore. That's what America but soon, has I blew the whistle on that, that, that whole rental thing. I mean, there are places in Florida. This, I, I, did, a, I did a video on it a year and a half ago complete brand new communities built by well-known builders they're not for sale they're for rent you have you pay for your lawn you pay for everything else like mm -hmm. you own it right but you don't the, no. i'm talking massive neighborhoods that are now just but new it's so interesting that way here though for a while though because because the cost of buying a house in connecticut has been so expensive for a long time and not matching the salaries. Like if you want a decent house in Connecticut, you're looking at spending 300,000 off the off the rip for a decent house. You can find a house that's in the 160s, um, but you don't necessarily want to live there. Yeah, but it you feels like we're kind of moving in California in, for that. But we're moving into a very, as much as our forefathers or our, our, not our forefathers, fuck them, they didn't do shit. But just whatever, in my mind at this point, when I think about everybody who came here because they didn't want to pay taxes, right? Whatever. They thought the king sucked. Fuck him. Whatever. But here's the deal. Ultimately, the the way that we're doing it with, with property is almost equivalent to England. It's like when Prince William, you know, what he just inherited when his father became whatever. Those were properties that are all rental. And, or when you even buy a house, it's for 75 years you buy a house for. And then the lease comes back up and, you know, it, it's like, think about that. So we're essentially going back into that kind of feudal system anyway, where these properties will be owned by corporations, but all it takes is for a few merging corporations to come together and it's one person owning your ass. So this is what's so dangerous about the fact that they're owning properties because you're talking about it you know go look it up look at what prince william owns shit that's like uh people can rent like little like caravan uh lands plots of land and he still gets money from it he siphons off every fucking last crumb but we're headed down that road here if we're not really careful by allowing uh, corporations to all they have to do is put their heads together and say, let's just merge. We could own the whole yep. city of Los Angeles. Well, yeah. I think that's what the ultimate plan is. I'm just going to be very honest. Absolutely. Elon Musk, very could own long it time ago. Elon Musk could go in and buy each and every little fucking developer stuff and his and his family. He'll be like a monarch. He would just he would just own. And it is it right for foreign people, number one, 
to own this country the way they that they are Chinese. They're trying to stop them. I'm not trying to be a bitch about this, but it is something to think about. I mean, we can't even keep our sailors who have Chinese inheritance or anybody else seems like everybody's like betraying the country at, the, at this moment. And I don't think people really understand yeah. what that means to us when shit, when your classified information is given. They need to paint the scenario for people to show what your life will look like if too many trade secrets are out and stop making heroes out of bitches like the one who has to stay in Russia for the rest of his life and every other fucking person. Mm -hmm. Not cool. Well, you know, with, with this whole taking over um, housing to become rental, the place that's going to suffer the worst is going to be the South. Why? Because there's a lot of land there to take and to yeah. build on. And a lot of people are used to home ownership there there like i live in a place where you have to make three and a half times the um rent in order to even be considered to apply for an apartment and down south you don't have to have that you just have to make one and a half times the amount and people own house like i had a house down there and my my um it was in a subdivision and i tell you my mortgage per month was 700 dollars. that was it but now They've gone up a little bit, but not much. But they've built subdivision after subdivision after subdivision. When I was last in South Carolina to see my dad, he lives in a subdivision where they just bought five acres more of property to build houses that are going to be rental only. And so, you know, my dad lives in the part that that people own, but they're building they're building the ones to rent out to people. Why? Because there's the land and they can do it fairly cheap and people can afford it, but but they have so many predatory lenders down there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so but predatory they're gonna, lenders. They're ultimately going yeah. to go to the government and get subsidies. Of course. And then they're going to zone people in zones, ultimately, because this just can't work with having people rent everything. But then again, you're looking that it did exist with a mind full of fucking like idiots like look at england prince william the duchy of cornwall i think he has over a billion dollars property portfolio with 23 counties in england and in wales and they're offering like holiday royal holiday cottage uh vacations packages at 17 pounds a day a night but get this though all of this adds off from leeches leeching on your fucking system this is like these are not properties that could be turned over or what they are they are we are getting to the point where this is what we are reflecting in that greed and that is this is a disaster because yeah. i'm telling you if i didn't live where i live i wouldn't be living here i couldn't afford it no fucking way it's just the simple it's the simple truth because I'm at a certain age and, you know, when you're like 60 or 61, they start throwing your ass out. Where, where are you going to go when you're at the point where you're on a fixed income? This country, oh my God, guys, this is, this is so heinous. It's got the ugliest face. This country okay. has the ugliest face. All right. It does. We're going to yeah. cut it off right there. Has some some uh final comments here we go so wig maniac is here saying here comes a cashless society paul katz says but what would a cashless society do uh, for anybody uh, ain't, ain't nobody gonna be walking away uh, with no cash <laughs> paul says thank you for all this information about wells fargo lala they handled my long paid off car loan but this gives me a heads up if i want to buy a new car they can't be the bank handling the loan uh black beauty says it's not just a property in this country that's being commercialized, but the country as a whole. My concern is the top 1% will continue to siphon off the literal life out of what we people, totally. of we the people in the USA, and also says our constitutional rights are being reduced like sand in broken hourglass, and unless or until Americans wake up, nothing will change. They All won't right. wake up. They will never no. wake up. We're asleep at the wheel. Okay. All right. So that is that is it for another epic conversation. We started with two and then Jill Jones came in and just had just ramped up the party. There we go. 
So, as always, I want to thank everyone who watches live on the replay. But more importantly, I want to thank the three ladies. The three ladies are back. It's been a minute. Yes, it so is. True. It's been a I minute. Like it. It's been a minute. People are saying, where are they at? Where are they at? <laughs> so they're back. So they're back. So before we let them go, let's start off and get their contact information. First up, there is a lady from a sunnier climate. <laughs> well, you can find me um, at Realty Goddess everywhere, but I will tell you guys, Threads is not playing nice with me, so you can't find me there for whatever reason. You'll see my account, oh. but I can't see you. I have no idea. I'm not blocked, and they're not helping. So, okay, oh, we do. That's what we do. Next up, Jill Jones. Uh, I guess that's it, right? Jill D. Jones. I have a few things like on Blue Sky now and a couple of other threads. I think I'm okay. on there too. Okay. Um, and then my Facebook page. Um, yeah, I'm just, you know, just whatever there. it is. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. And Aisha K. Steggers. Well, thank you everybody for bearing with me while my mouth tries to catch up with my brain. Um, that's probably the best way, but I'm still being a bit antisocial. Okay. All right. No problem. And if you want to get a hold of me, this is where you go. The, the Dr. Vibe Show, the D-R-V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W.com website. Email D-R period V-I-B-E at the D-R-V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W. YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, the Dr. Vibe Show. Twitter at D-R-V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W. And I'm not on Twitter that much anymore. It just I just noticed that I don't there's nothing there. And Instagram at the D R V I B E S H O W dot com. So a few last things. Let's just do some things here. You can watch replays of State of Things with Aisha Jen Lala on the Dr. Vibe Show on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and the website, the D R V I B E S H O W dot com. And some little last things we got going on here. Please like the Dr. Vibe Show on YouTube or subscribe to the Dr. Vibe Show on YouTube. Hit the notification button so you get notified of epic conversations and like the Dr. Vibe Show on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. If you're up to it, advertise. If you want to advertise on the platform, email me at dr.vibe at the dr.vibeshow.com. And finally, and always join the State of Things Discord group. Email me, dr. Period, v i b e at the dr. v i b e s h o w dot com. So, as always, we like to say this: live your life as a dream. If you can dream it, you can make it. Sometimes you get, sometimes you have to get smaller, get stronger. Block assumptions, then aim bigger, aim better, aim higher, aim wider. Love, faith, and respect, and remember to give yourselves grace. And I'm going to do this to finish off. All right. Well, I am really glad that the ladies are back. I hope you are too. God bless. Peace out. Keep the faith and see you on Discord.